Good evening, good evening and happy new year everyone and welcome, <coughs> happy 2021, yes we're back, yes we all survived 2020 and of course uh, the best thing that came out of 2020 was Ben's camera show, the worst thing that came out well of 2020 there's a, there's a big list of contenders there but um, here we are, ah. Here we are with uh, episode one of season two of Ben's Camera Show. My God, we got renewed. We got renewed for a new season. Ah, thank you to the commissioners. Uh, <laughs> although, guess who guess who decides whether Ben's Camera Show gets a second season? This guy. And uh, <laughs> who's got two thumbs and loves camera? This guy. Yes. And uh, who's who has uh, completely renovated all his um, streaming setup and uh, uh, computer. This guy, because now I can actually hear, I can monitor what's going on, so I won't be drowning myself out with music anymore. Um, for those of you who are new to Ben's Camera Show, this is the kind of thing that went on in season one. It was kind of like, oh, I've got a great camera to show, but firstly, let me tell you about... Yeah, that's, that's the kind of uh, technical hitch that we used to have. But uh, now everything's good. Although we still don't have a sponsor because I don't have enough views on YouTube. And I don't give a monkeys because I just love doing this. And I'm sure you, the viewers, love to uh, watch this without commercial interruptions, without a sponsor, and without anyone telling me what to do. Except uh, you lovely folks in the chat. And I can see you're already there. Hooray. Uh, already, some guys say, uh, this guy Mike says, eagerly awaited this over the holidays. I plan to make my first ever Super 8 project this year. Excellent, Mike. Thank you very much for uh, telling us about that. And uh, hey, send it in. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll show it. We will show it. I will show it. Uh, there is a we involved in this show because, uh, not on this show, but in this show generally, not this episode. Um, and that is, uh, we will be having guests this season, of course, like we had the first season. And because we did the first, I did the first season, more and more guests are saying, yes, I will appear on your show. And I'm really excited. I'm not going to tell you right now who they are, but I've got some very, very big names in the world of Super 8 and cameras in general. Basically, I, uh, well, I, I reached out to a few people who are basically the Mount Rushmore of Super 8 and uh, cameras generally. And many of them said yes, and I'm really happy about that. Not this show, this is just me, this show, because I, uh, I didn't reach out quickly enough to get anyone on this show, but that doesn't matter because we'll get, uh, um, we'll get people on future shows. Ah, so, how have you all been? I hope you've all been, been, uh, been all right and filming stuff over Christmas and the new year. And uh, well, it was my birthday over the over the uh, intervening period between season one and season two i turned the big 5-0 and yep it was uh, i had a lovely birthday and i got a really really great present which i'm going to be showing you later thank you to my lovely wife for that i don't know i'm looking over there that's my projector but <laughs> oh dear okay we're off to a fantastic start let's uh let's 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 have a look at some cameras ah oh, but firstly before we look at some cameras uh, I'm going to show you something I got here. Okay, firstly, I'm going to go, oh, whoops, oh, that way. I'm going to go into my little box here because the main screen is not for my ugly mug. It's for the, uh, it's for the cameras. So here we go. There we go. Right, that's better. Now, what is this graphic? This actually ties in quite nicely with, uh, with what I'm, uh, what I'm going to show you. What's this graphic? What's this? It's about what's what this show's all about. Hmm. Oh, what is this? It's an old advert. What's? Uh, let's see if I can. 
uh, reveal a bit more. Ooh, yes. This show is all about the mighty Bolex. The big Bolex, the, uh, some would say the greatest cameras of them all, made by uh, a company called Bolex Payard in Switzerland. And you know how, how, uh, how, how, how intricate camera mechanisms are? Well, who better? Who better to make cameras than the Swiss? I can't think of anyone except maybe the Japanese and uh, the Germans. Um, with whatever, wherever Bell and Howell is is based, I think that's America. Yeah, they they're, they're all right. The Americans they they've done some good cameras. So let's see what we've got first. Well, is it a camera? Is it a camera? Or let's uh, let's get the big reveal here. Oops, no, 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 not that. <laughs> it's already going really well. Okay, so the slideshow is uh, the background picture off and. Here we go. Three, two, one. Da 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 Or should I say, should I go? No, that's that's a very um, uh, deep track for you Bond lovers. It's the uh, man with the golden gun, but it's not the golden gun. It's a Bolex and some accessories, all arranged in a lovely way to uh, resemble a firearm because I got bored <laughs> and uh, oh, damn it, this. oh the nitrile gloves oh my god I forgot the nitrile gloves hold one moment I'll go get the nitrile gloves I'll sing a bit of uh, bond music as I go oh I'm back let me just plug myself back into the system. Oh, looks like it's straight from Q Branch, says Joseph Khan. Indeed it does. Pay attention, 007. Uh, get the old nitrile gloves on, then we're gonna show you what we got here. Uh, here's a little Bond fact for you, because apart from cameras, I'm into James Bond like any, any sad middle-aged man. Um, Q from the Bond films, do you know what Q stands for? Do you know what Q stands for? It stands for Quartermaster. There we go, that's a little fact for you. Quartermaster, the guy in the army who, who's in charge of all the kit. Right, now what do we have? Let's deconstruct this, shall we? So here's a handle. Here is a camera body with a lens in it. Here's two more lenses. And this thing, well, I'll get onto that. I'll get onto that later. This is a Bolex. B8L. Now, what's, oh, let's move that out of the way. What's a Bolex B8L? Well, firstly, I mean, just look at it. Good Lord. What a beauty. Bolex have a very specific style. They have a very specific visual style to their cameras. They go in for a lot of black leatherette and chrome. And their cameras, they shine. Look at that. Glittering there. There's a certain style. So what I'll do first, before I go into this camera, I'm gonna give you a bit of uh, uh, backstory about the Bolex, because you, you might have heard of the Bolex. Don't get it mixed up with the, with the Bolia, another fine camera. But let's talk about the Bolex. Well, the Bolex, let me get my, my notes here. Ah, right, I got some history here. Oops, I better not show you the notes. I better look like I'm actually uh, thinking, up, thinking of this off the top of my head. So, the Bolex. Bolex was, uh, well, firstly, there was a company called Payard, Payard, which was formed in uh, 1814. And it was, uh, obviously, photography <laughs> hadn't even been invented in 1814. So, what were they making? They were making watch movements and music box mechanisms. A bit like Sankyo. Sankyo started off making music boxes. And you can really see the link between the intricacies of a music box and of a, uh, a camera mechanism and a watch in, as well. I mean, Bolex users, they love to talk about how the, the fact that Bolexes are made in Switzerland, like, like the finest Swiss watches and swatches. <laughs> um, so yes, 1814, they started off as music boxes. Now it, let's jump forward to 1920. They started making typewriters, uh, also like Sankyo. Interesting parallel there. And in 1928, 
the very first, uh, hang on, was it 1928? No, it's not 1928. It's, uh, yes, yes, in 1928, it was. They came up with something called the Auto Cine A. A guy called Jacques Bogopolsky, who we'll talk, we'll talk about him later. Let's have a look at some actual pictures here. There it is. There it is. The very first Bolex, the Auto Cine A. If you happen to see one of these uh, jobbies in a, in a uh, thrift store or a, uh, or, a, or a garage sale or whatever, or, or eBay, snap it up. These things are, are, are valuable collector's items. Later on, they made hundreds of Bolexes, but uh, this one is the, and it took eight millimeters, this one's the first ones, the Auto Cine A, uh, followed by, let's see if we can uh, get it. There we go. Right. Now, this is the L8. Now, the naming scheme of Bolexes uh, is usually, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a kind of a, a range which has a letter, A, B, C, whatever, and followed by a number, which is often the uh, number of millimeters of the film stock. So uh, if it's got an eight in it, it's eight millimeter. If it's 16, it's got a 16 millimeter. I'm still trying to work out the, the, the scheme beh between the, uh, uh, behind the actual letters of these. I'm not really sure I understand what their thinking was with their different, but this was called the, uh, the, 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 what was this? This is the C, no, this is the L8 the L8. Now, as you can see, it's got a, let me put the uh, main camera on. I can actually, <laughs> so we've got the, the big picture of the Bolex, and then we've got the little actual Bolexes. Wow, layers upon layers. Now, this bit here, that's the winding mechanism. These were all uh, wind-ups, and uh, there's the single lens, and it's a non, non-reflex viewfinder. It just, there was just a, a, a basically a tunnel going right through to the eyepiece there. It didn't go, what you saw was not exactly what was through the lens. Close enough, unless you got too close to your subject. And here is, um, here's some uh, adjustment. That's, the, that's your shutter button there. So that was the L8, 1942 to 1947, these ones were made. And here, whoa, <laughs> here is, uh, I believe, a C8, also um, 1954 to 1961, these were. C8, now if it's got a C, it's got one single lens on it. These, this is the main way you can, uh, you can tell the difference between these Bolexes. And these are all standard eight, by the way. These predate Super 8. Never mind, we'll, we'll get on to Super 8 in a minute, in a few minutes. So you've got your lens, you've got your viewfinder, you've got your uh, shoot, yeah, that's, ah, now that's a zoom for just the viewfinder, depending on which lens you put on it. Uh, I'll show you that in later with the, real, with the real deal. And here are your filming speeds. I think that one goes up from, they usually go from about eight frames a second to about 64 frames a second, not bad. Um, that was the Bolex C8. Now, after that, we get into something called the B8, the B8. And I think B might mean for buy, buy lenses, because there's two of them. Who knows? That's my own shortcut uh, in way of thinking. That's the B8. That's got uh, two lenses. And after that, they came up with this, and that's the uh, D8. The, uh, the D8. Oh, the, the, the B8 was made from 1953 to 61. And uh, the D8, uh, I'm not sure. Ah, you know what? This is a good time to go to the internet, because what I've got to show you here, this is a great great website for all Bolex uh, users. It's called bolexcollector.com. Bolexcollector.com was set up by a guy called Michael Tisdale back in the early days of the internet. And it's, it's a lovely HTML site with uh, absolutely everything you can, uh, you can think of. Um, every single Bolex is described and notes are on it. And it's got a lovely uh, sidebar. Remember sidebars? You can go to every single type of Bolex. Uh, I'll put a link to them in, uh, on the website, which you can see right above me here, zerobudgetfilmschool.com. That's me website for this show. We'll, so I'll be, uh, I'll be putting some of that on there, uh, putting the link to this up on there. But it's bolexcollector.com. And I, got a, I've, I owe Mr. Tisdale a real debt here because um, uh, I, it was so, so useful for the, uh, for the, for the research for this show. Um, 
So let's, uh, we'll be coming back to that site. Oh, there's a lot of stuff we're coming back to. There's the D8. So D has three lenses in a turret. Of course, this was before the advent of zoom lenses. Three lenses in a turret. So you've got your telephoto, your medium range, and maybe your wide angle. So you can switch them around. The good thing about these is that the actual lens turret is no wider than the camera itself, which is really nice. A lot of cameras, they've they got, they got a body at the back, and then they've got this massive great turret, which just, just ruins the lines of it. Uh, to be honest, three lenses is even a bit much for me. I think I, I, think I prefer the B8, um, which has just two lenses, and it's a nice, it's a nice, lines, nice uh, look to it. So let's look at the B8. Oh, my God, we've got a, we've got a lot to look at here. Or do we? Let's get... The, uh, let's zoom in a bit on that. Uh, focus? Ah, oh, well, we'll get to the focus. Now, what are these lenses? They are removable lenses. That's right. They are removable lenses. They're, whoops, <laughs> and droppable lenses. They're called D lenses, D mount lenses. And so if, you're, uh, if you don't like the lens you've got on it, you can just buy another lens. And let me tell you, they're not cheap. Jesus, I mean, I've I bought this. This is the uh, this is the six point five millimeter one, the real wide angle one. And that cost a pretty penny. I've seen these ones go for like ninety pounds each. That's a nine zero ninety pounds. Uh, I got this for a bit less. Luckily, I, I lurked on eBay until I found a good uh, a good one, and uh, I snapped it up for a, for quite a bit less than that. So I'm a lucky boy, me. Now this is actually called the B eight L. The B8L, because it's got a light meter on it. L is for light meter. Um, now, uh, this one's got a crack in the screen, which is why I got it cheap. This camera, can you believe it, with two lenses, I got for 18 pounds. 18, one eight, not even eight zero. And this is the kind of the, uh, this is the way it goes often with cameras, which is you buy a really cheap one, then you realize, oh my God, a lens is gonna, co <laughs> another lens is gonna cost at 90 pounds, and a handle's gonna cost whatever. Um, and yeah, it all it all builds up. So let's go through these knobs here. Well, firstly, the big, big, big knob on the Bolex here is your winder, and it's a lovely winder. I've had I've had a few standard eight cameras, and some of them you <laughs> I don't know why this is important to me, but it just is. When you turn it, some super eight, some standard eight cameras you turn, then you got to turn around your hand, turn it some more, do it your hand, turn it around. This one has a backwind facility. Well, not really backwind in that sense, but you can turn the winding back so that when you when you wind it up, you can just go whoosh, back, whoosh, back. See? Just easy. And when you when you when you turn it clockwise, you can feel resistance. And anti-clockwise, no resistance at all. Beautiful mechanism. Lovely uh lovely action. And it doesn't make any sounds at all because I've given it a lube, a lubrication. We'll show that. We'll show you later. Oh, that's it. That's as far as it'll go. Now this, I'm going to zoom in for some of these for these knobs. Okay, let's just focus it because focusing is important, as us camera people know. Okay, that's good. Right. Oh, damn it. Okay. All right. So. What we've got here are our film speeds. Now, 18, no, no, 16 frames a second is the red one there. 16 is your usual uh, rate for standard eight. 16 frames a second, but there's 18 there. Uh, if I can move this. So there's 18, there's uh, 24, 32, 48. 64, all the way up to 64 frames a second. My God, you can go real fast motion. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a smooth, it's not, it doesn't to jump onto these uh, frames. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't click between these uh, frame rates. It's actually a smooth knob all the way, all the way through. I've got a smooth knob on, on my Bolex. And, um, and so if you want to go somewhere between 32 and 48 for whatever reason, you can just, you can just do it. You can just go, go there. So that's your film speed. Uh, up here, okay, now this is the magnification of the eyepiece. This is something you don't get on cameras anymore because there are generally reflex cameras where what you see through the, through the um, lens is exactly what you see through the eyepiece. This isn't. 
this this eyepiece here at the back actually views through this oops, through this window here. So when you put a say a thirty six millimeter lens on for zoom for close ups, I shouldn't say zoom for close ups, which is what this is, a thirty six mil lens. You then have to change this knob up to 36, and that magnifies your eyepiece. Do you get me? Do you get me? So let's say we want to go to 12.5. Uh, this isn't a 12.5 lens, but it doesn't matter. You just rotate the lenses. So that one's now at the top. And then you turn this knob to whatever, to 12.5. And then what you see through the eyepiece has been uh, magnified. Okay, so the main thing is to remember is to not think that this is some kind of zoom knob and um, what you see through the eyepiece is basically sort of zoomed in and out. That doesn't mean what you're filming on the on the your film is zoomed in and out. Okay, it, the, what's on your film is dependent on which lens is, oops, is on the top. I'm sorry I'm moving it around so much. It's kind of hard to hold this thing. It's kind of heavy. So yeah, whichever lens is on top is the one that's actually going onto your film. Okay. Now down here, this is an interesting knob right here. Okay, I'm gonna try not to move it so much, but here we go. Uh, there we are. What is this knob here? This is a shutter angle uh, adjustment. It says 38 and 76. That's your how how what fraction of a second each of your um, each of your frames is going to be. So it's actually, I think it's 38. So it's 1 38th of a second. And if you push this knob out and turn it like that, it goes to 1 76th of a second, okay? Because the shutter angle is now at half, half mast, as it were. So the shutter angle, and I've talked about shutter angles before, and I probably will again, but when it's fully open, it's I think it's at 160 degrees. And half full, uh, well, that would be uh, 80 degrees, I guess. And then if you put it all the way to the top, that's completely closed. So if you put it like that, you won't film, uh, nothing will come through. And this is useful for your, uh, for, zoom, for fading, fading in and out. So if you're filming and you turn, you fade in, you can go like that. You can fade out by going like that. It's got a little knob here to stop it from moving while you're filming. And right here, this is our shutter release. No, 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 that's the shutter release selector. So when it's all the way up, the shutter is locked. And this is the shutter, this, this knob here. You push it down to start filming. That's uh, up there is, uh, is, is shutter is off. You can't do anything. I mean, you, it's locked. Uh, if you bring it down to halfway and push this down, it takes single frames. Of course, single frames. Who, who doesn't like single frame shooting? Um, in fact, let's get the let's get the extra microphone on here so we can uh, we can listen to that. Okay, now we've got the microphone. We can really hear what's going on now. Oops, I just switched the mic on. Okay, here we go. All right, single frames. Here we go and. There we go. One frame every time I do that. And then you push it down a bit further and it's... There we go. Full, it's full on. Full auto. So it's full automatic. <laughs> to use the gun metaphor. Semi-automatic and locked. Locked off. Ah. God, I'm, I'm glad I set up another microphone. Uh, right. Now, we've seen those knobs, we've seen the winder, we've seen those knobs. Yeah, we're all good on that side. Let's focus it back here. Whoops, my crib sheet. Um, right. So <laughs> now on this side, so we've, we've got the, uh, yes, B8L, so the light meter. Now the light meter, I'll, I'll get onto that in a sec. These are the lenses. This is a 36 millimeter lens. Nice, nice zooms, uh, not zooms, nice close ups with that. That's a uh, wide angle lens. And here is a uh, medium, medium distance lens. So if you want to change, okay, it would be useful to have three lenses in a turret, but it's really not much trouble to uh, take one off and, uh, 
and just screw it back, screw it on for the next, uh, for your, uh, <laughs> of course, when I said it's not much trouble there, I end up having trouble with it. Okay, um, I'll, I'll, bloody hell. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. And on this side, well, that's the uh, thing to open up the film compartment. So let's have a look inside. Oh, beautiful. Black, of course. This is like hot black Desiato stunt ship, really. Everything possible that can be black is black. And the only other color, of course, is just chrome. Who doesn't like I mean, Black and chrome is bloody timeless. Right, let's run the, run the motor. Oh, and get the mic on it. Why not? Uh, Beautiful. 62 years old, this camera. Even older than me. There we go, that's a single frame. One thing I do like about this is there's none of that nonsense with um, the, uh, the, the, the reels not going, only going one particular way. Because I've noticed on these reels, some of them have got three uh, uh, catches on one side and four on the other. It doesn't, the bollocks doesn't care. Whichever one you want to put, they, it's, it's on you whether you get these the right way around. Um, and the way you, uh, you load one of these, you put a full thing of film in here. It goes around, you, oh, you open the gate like that. There we go. And it goes around, around here and gets taken up here. Easy peasy, shut the gate, shut the door. You are ready to roll. And so that's the Bolex B8. But B8L, because of the light meter. Now, the light meter. I, I actually wondered whether I should go into this, but I, I really do think that it's, uh, it's, it's important. And the, the whole thing, whoops, the whole thing about the light meter, it doesn't quite work like, like uh, light meters you're used to works. It's, um, okay, I'll go through it, I'll go through it. What you've got to do, if you want to meter your film, firstly, you've got to assume that the light meter's working, which it might not be. These are old light meters. They might be skewed, the, the, the readings. However, I did find that this one uh, does work. Now, I'm going to get a, special, a light here to simulate, well, to simulate light. <laughs> and I'm going to get the camera a lot closer, hopefully without getting in my viewpoint there we go all right so what you do first is you look over here and you with your oh, let's zoom in a bit closer here okay so as far as we're going to be able to zoom and focus so it's got a series of numbers now this is actually an a, a, an aid to your uh, to your to your light meter. Okay, so the numbers up here are the ASA of the film you're using. Now it only goes from twelve to eighty. Twelve to eighty, which doesn't really help if you've got like hundred ASA film or uh, even five hundred ASA film. So, supposing you've got I don't know um, fifty ASA film. So you go to 50 and you go down and it's got these numbers here. Now these are your, it, um, your shutter, shutter angles and these numbers here are your, uh, your lens that you're using because they all have a bearing on what your, uh, what your uh, focus, what your light, light meter is going to be doing. So at 50 ASA, um, Let's say you're using the 12.5 lens at full shutter. That's 12. Okay, that gives you the number 12. What do you do with the number 12? Well, you go up here to this knob. Can we all see that? No, not really. Um, what you do, I've got a film of, of doing this just in case the, uh, the, the, the picture is, is impossible to see. But I'll try doing it with the picture first, with the live live picture, so I can talk about it. There we go. Okay, so you've got this knob up here. What you've got to do with this is to line up the number 12 that we got earlier with, with your shooting frames per second. So let's say we're shooting at 16 frames a second. You turn this, you pull it up, and you turn it so that the number 12 lines up with the number 16. 
So there's 12, there's 16, uh, nearly there. Uh, there. Okay, so that's number 12 lined up with number 16. Now you see when I was turning this knob, this red needle is moving. See that? Red needle goes up, goes down. That does not change the aperture of the light meter. That is your uh, the, your uh, your needle, your your guide needle, call it your guide needle, which tells you where your light meter should be. Okay, now there's another needle. Now this is the bit that's really hard to to see. There it is. Okay, you see that? Supposing you get your guide needle there, it's at about uh, halfway. Then you, on your lens, you change your aperture. Now you can just about see inside that lens there that the aperture is opening and closing. Maybe I can get a better shot of it right down the barrel there. Oh yeah, you can just about see that little eye right in the middle there, opening and closing. See that? There's your aperture. Now, as I'm moving that, you'll notice that, oh no, wait a minute, firstly, <laughs> I forgot. To do any light meter, you've got to press this down first, this button here. Because what that button does is that, um, that brings a selenium cell in the way of the uh, lens. Okay, so. Ah, did you see that? Okay, I'm going to move, I'm going to open and close the iris here and see if I can, there we go. Okay, see that black needle? It's another needle there, see? It's going back and forth. It's opening and closing depending on where I am moving. That's a good shot there. It opens and closes depending on where I'm opening and closing the aperture. Right? I've lost it now. Where's it gone? Uh, there it is, there it is. Okay, so I turn this. So now, now I turn the aperture on the lens until the two of them are lined up. Uh, that's about there. You see that? That's two over, that's two under. And when they're lined up, boom, right there. Now I have the proper, proper aperture. And that was at, where was that? That was at, uh, oh, F11 of all things. Oh, it's because I'm shining a bloody great light right in the mid into it. F11. So, so okay, if I was shooting at 16 frames a second with 50 ASA film, uh, with the shutter angle all the way open, and this light going right into it, that's that's what I want, F11. I've got a better, um, a better, uh, here we are in the screening room here. I've got a, a, a little, a bit of a, uh, a better film where you can sort of see what's going on here. So yeah, so there's your, there's our, uh, there's our, our, our exposure index um, lookup chart, and there's me turning the the knob, the uh, the exposure indicator, and then I change the aperture there. And you can see the uh, the black needle just about coinciding with the red needle, and that convoluted method is how you judge the aperture on your uh, on your Bolex B8L. Oh, whoops! <laughs> uh, that's how you judge your Bolex B8L aperture. Uh, you look up. You look up the exposure index. You set the exposure index, and then you change your your uh, light, your aperture. Oh yeah, you've got to press this button down, of course, and then you've got to change all of that to uh, to to adjust it, and then you've got to trust the camera that the light meter is even working, which it might not be. You know, let's be fair here. These things are old. These uh, these cameras. They uh, they have. Um, uh, you know, selenium cells. It's not. It's not a perfect uh, way of doing things, but it's it's the best they had in uh, the early '60s. Right. Let's get that locked off there and the focus. There we go. So that's the Bolex B8L. Uh, let's have a look at some footage that we shot that I shot on the Bolex. So let's um, let's put me in here. So in the picture. Right. Um, okay, so the first thing I shot was some old Kodachrome 25. Now, look at that. See, it's kind of shimmering the picture. It's, 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 
It's before I gave it a, a clean and lubrication. You see, it's, it's kind of pulling down like that. Okay, never mind the double exposure. Um, but it's that's because, um, well, I'll, t I'll show you how it's, why it's because later. Okay, there's some single frames. There's some single frames I shot. And um, finally, just uh, mucking about. Mucking about. Well, this is Kodachrome 25, which I developed as a negative in code in Caffanol. And uh, damn, it looks pretty good. It's uh, it's not very um, it's not very uh, sensitive anymore, but it's not bad. London Zoo, the gorillas, and that was I think I shot these next few shots with the uh, the, the 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 telephoto lens. So that's from a long way away. Uh, you want to you don't want to get too close to gorillas. Let me tell you, those guys, <laughs> they can throw you right across the room and break your camera. So uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's uh, Kodachrome twenty five. Um, let's have a look at some uh, some more. Here's some here's some f also expired footage, expired film. That's this is something called uh, Eastman Color Negative ECN, which only really works on sunny days. I've talked about it before in in other films and in other camera shows. But these prime lenses, I gotta say, these non-zoom lenses, they give you a nice, a nice sharp image um, if you've uh, if you've if you've focused it correctly. Some flowers. This is my uh, Adrian Cousins tribute there, um, <laughs> and uh, walking with the family on the heath. Not bad. Um, it needed a bit of uh, color correction, and of course, there's the, uh, the the normal horrific developing job that I did on this. Uh, on this. Um, ah, that's in Germany, of all places. Manswood or somewhere. Um, yeah, well, I mean, there's not much else to show you here. Um, so, yeah, lovely. It works. <laughs> Damn thing works after 62 years. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that in a minute because I've got, a, I've got, I've got some, uh, some more stuff on that to show you. Uh, let's have a look at some 500T film. Uh, firstly, uh, 500T is for tungsten, and this is what happens when you don't put the uh, the little uh, put the uh, put the uh, daylight lens on. That's when you do have the daylight lens. So see, changes the color back, and it all looks good. Single images, and let's see. Well, I think we're going underground as well. Those are all still images. Yeah, here we go. So all of that, uh, all of that guff on the on the picture there that's just uh scratches from developing but yeah you can expose 500t down the underground looks very nice no complaints really other than the uh, awful job i did uh developing it well it's not awful and you can shoot 500t in uh in daylight by the way it's not just a a, a, a stock for uh, for the um uh for the for the for dark rooms and uh dimly lit uh, atmosphere you can you can go to the beach and you can shoot it there as well just uh, just watch your exposure lovely lovely uh, that was last year was, <laughs> this is all pre-covid last year uh, when the uh, the Kent virus was uh, was uh, unknown <laughs> and that was in Kent Believe it or not, that's in a lovely little town on the coast of Kent called Broadstairs. And uh, yeah, of course, you can go in. You can sh keep shooting till evening. Just open your uh, open your uh, your iris up a bit. The Charles Dickens, yes, Charles Dickens came from there. And you can go and you can shoot inside as well. That's under tungsten light, proper tungsten light. It's what this film is for, 500T. But I hear you say, what's that, 500T? 500T, can you get standard 8 500T film? I hear you ask. Maybe some of you are saying. Um, 500T, yes, you can. Well, sort of. Okay. The, and this is gets, this, now we get on to where you can get film for these cameras. Okay, it's not quite as straightforward as getting Super 8, although it can be, su can be straightforward. If you go to somewhere like Karl in Germany, um, and uh, on 8mm maybe, and I think the Analog Film Photography Project in America. Um, and you can also get it from, I think, um, 
yeah, I think Pro Eight does uh, does does uh, eight standard eight eight millimeter film. But um, where can where can you get five hundred T? Well, what I did. I did this is this took me forever. This was a bit of a, an ordeal. But at B and H, oops. B and H, let's get the uh, the main disc thing off here. B and H in New York sell they sell Kodak 5 Vision 3 500T 16 mm film because this is of course all 16 mm film. You can buy it uh, in 400 foot lengths. And it says here, notice it says double perf um let's get the main camera on right here it says double perf you have to get double perf which means the holes are on both sides of the 16 mil film and even with the holes on both sides it's not enough to uh, just buy that and put it in a uh, in a in a in a standard eight camera you've got to get extra holes put into it uh luckily luckily uh the wonderful ed noble did it for me he has he's a guy in here in london he has a perf machine and uh, and he, if you uh, if I, I sent him this double perf film and he sent it back with uh, even more perfs in it so that I can run it in a standard eight camera like my Bolex. Um, um, the machine, I believe, is currently being retooled, but when he gets it up and running again, I am going to go back there and uh, I'm going to get 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 some more 16 mil perfed because that basically. OK, let's work out the numbers here. Super 8 costs something like 40 pounds for 50 feet, right? And uh, this stuff is uh, $229.95 for 400 feet. I've done the maths here. Um, this is for, well, for English people. Um, <laughs> with, 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 with VAT and with shipping and everything, it comes to $318. Three hundred eighteen dollars is two hundred and thirty-two pounds at the current rate, and for four hundred foot, you can uh, divide it by uh, well twenty-five foot lengths, which is the normal length for one of these cameras. That's you can get sixteen rolls out of four hundred a four hundred foot can, and sixteen rolls at two hundred thirty-two pounds comes to fourteen pounds fifty a roll. And let's see when you've put when you factored in the costs of the perfing and spooling down and maybe some more reels to put it on. It's let's say it's about twenty pounds. Comes twenty pounds for a twenty-five foot roll. And twenty-five foot roll, well, you shoot on each side of it, so that's fifty feet of standard eight um, standard eight footage. So basically the same amount of footage as you get in a super eight cartridge for about 20 pounds, 20 pounds a go. That's like half the price of a suit of a roll of Super 8. So there is a definite, definite uh, saving in, in shooting standard eight. Sorry, these, these nitrile gloves are giving me some trouble. Um, so yeah, so, so that's what I did. And I had, I ended up with uh, 16 rolls. Well, um, Ed actually spooled it down to 33 foot lengths because you can squeeze a bit more onto these. Um, so I've got 12, 30 foot, 33 foot rolls. And I'm down to my last one. Um, so I'm going to need to get some more of that. Well, excuse me. If you um, approach a company that, that perforates film, maybe you can uh, get buy some 16 mil, make sure it's double perf, so it's or 2R, and then you can uh, get them to do that. Otherwise, you can just go and buy some rolls of super of standard eight film. They're not cheap. They 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 are comparable to the price of a uh, of a super eight roll, which is about fifty pounds each. Um, now, let's get that away. So, that's, ah, and okay. So you've bought your. If you buy one of these cameras, you might want to know. Okay, maybe it's got a few problems. Maybe it needs a bit of uh, lubrication and adjustment. There's a fantastic website. Here's another website called Cine Tinker. Um, this was a blog that was uh, put out, but I don't know who it is. A guy called Dom uh, did this between 2013 and 2019. And he put what has to be the greatest step-by-step -step guides to taking one of these cameras apart and ex exactly which 
um, bits you have to do, where with the order you have to get everything out in. The it's, he's done it with photos. He's he's completely opened up one of these things, and it's fantastic. This is, this was such a useful guide to uh, to doing this. In fact, I filmed my taking a part of one of these cameras. I know this is for a turret one with three three but a D a D D eight L doesn't matter these bolexes are very kind of uh, modular the the if you have a bolex back um then doesn't matter what what's on the turret uh they are all pretty much built the same way so let's have a look let's have a look at what's involved in taking one of these things apart um let's see do i have it here bolet light meter adjustment no no not that not that not that Bolex dot. Uh, where did I put it? Uh, oh, okay. I seem to have not loaded the footage, but if you'll bear with me, oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, right. <laughs> Do you like ASMR videos? I know it's not really a thing anymore, but as ASMR. But I made an ASMR film of taking apart one of these things. So let's have a look. I put the sound really high. So, as you can hear, this one, yeah, it didn't, didn't sound too happy when I, uh... yeah, let's see, that's the sound of one that needs a lot of uh, lubrication. You can hear it kind of like a... Yeah, no, it doesn't sound doesn't sound very happy. Oh, this is that squeaking. I hope you're doing it. Right here. Let's try to do it. I'm taking off the lens now. I've got to take the lenses off first. Uh, look at all that mold nasty. <laughs> Benjamin Marriott says, this is on the channel. You sneeze at the end. Yes, very, very uh, well spotted there. Yes, this is a, uh, a film I put out a while ago. And because it's relevant, I'm putting it on here. I'll put the sneeze in. Wow, look at that. Look at the, look at the, look at the frost coming off that spring. It's beautiful. Shame about all the dust. Don't worry, I cleaned it all up. Tweezers are very good to have. You need tweezers. You can, that's a good thing about these. You, you can basically take the whole thing apart with tweezers and uh, some pliers and a screwdriver. So. Yeah. I mean, look, this is on my channel, so you can you can go watch it whenever you want, and go to the Cine Tinker blog because it's uh, it, without that I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have known what I was up to. Uh, not sure that thing. Oh, you can hear the noise of the nitrile blood. Ugh. That noise is inducing the opposite of a pleasurable response. Where do you store those pliers? Yeah, they were they were old ones. Ah, now here's the inside of it. And then if you turn the vol turn the turn up louder, uh, fast, faster. Not supposed to sound like that. Now. This bit here, these bits are very important. I clean them up. This this is what's behind the. It's behind the. I uh, see. I'm re-greasing that thing. And what that does is it makes that thing slip. 
and that that solved that problem I had before with the uh, the frame. Oh yeah, Gosh. here we go. So that's the shutter mechanism. So what's nice about this is that is that these cameras can all be taken apart by one person with a screwdriver and a couple of other tools. It's 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 not beyond anyone. They don't hide the screws behind the leatherette and all that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's my sneezing at the end. So yeah, that's the. Uh, oops. Uh, let's have a look at um, just look those speeds again. So this is a new piece of footage. So um, that's the that 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 kind of um, that that circular thing. That's the winder, and that's at normal sixteen frames a second. And then here's single frame. Look at that beautiful motion. Look at that fantastic movement. Single frame, and finally, wow! That's so cool. Anyway, they, you can just have a lot of fun with these things. Even if you buy one that's broken, you can uh, you can um, have a uh, have a good time with it. So let's talk about some accessories. Let's talk about a, an accessory which is really, really, really extends the usefulness of these things. Let's get that off. There we go. Right. Firstly, uh, the handle. Ooh. Okay, this handle uh, costs more than this camera. <laughs> it's like the camera is like 18 pounds. The uh, handle there's 25 pounds. But you know, like I said, the, it's a slippery slope. Bolex ownership. They made so many cool, um, uh, really cool um, uh, uh, accessories and for these things that you just you just can't not um let's say okay so the handle screws into here there we go and it's got this little thing here and this is actually a mechanical finger kind of that's <laughs> all i can there's any way i can i can um describe it so when you hold the thing and you pull the handle let me hang on let me zoom this thing out again or not zoom let's move out a bit Okay, we are going to need a bit more space for this. There we go. Okay, so so when you screw the handle on, you can now you've got a you got a nice trigger here, and that trigger when you pull it is actually pushing pulling that uh, that handle down that 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 shutter there. See that that. So now we've got a handle. Now what we need is a reflex lens on this thing. A reflex lens. So we, what we see through the lens is exactly what we get. So we take these off. I'm going to do this as quick as I can, but it has, does take a little while. Uh, unfortunately, you see this thing. This is a Pan Sinor um, Somberthio Bertio lens, and it's got this thing, which is an eyepiece. It's a lens with its own eyepiece. Okay. So what I do? Oops. Take off the lens cap, the back cover there. Is you screw that on on the top like so I'll do it on this one. Ah, oh, damn it. Doing this all too fast and it's uh should just take a moment, calm down. There we go. See and there it goes. Right. So that's that. And then you can put this on making sure you've got the right got it on the right way <laughs> this is the scene from the man with the golden gun well i shall add it to my i shall add that to my uh, cellar and he takes out his pen and he takes out his lighter the colibri lighter and he starts putting them together in the cigarette case and then the next thing bond knows you got this in your hand look at that i mean that is a monster you take that's a bit like a an old um uh, what they call them a sextant almost it's that kind of that kind of amazing detail there so that's a better lens that and it's also a zoom this little uh, knob here that's the zoom in and out 
There's your eyepiece now, your better eyepiece. I wonder if you can, if I can show you what's going on through there. I doubt it. This is a this is an unholy marriage here of uh, webcam and Bolex. But there we go. Well, it's it's take from me, it looks better. There's also even a split image focusing there. And you walk around with this thing, you're, you're going to get some attention. Let me tell you, whether you like it or not, you film in there. So uh, yeah, that's great. So let's see what the difference is between these little D-mount lenses and this thing. And I actually did some tests here. Uh, it's a later part of this film. Um, so that's with the that's with the D-mount lenses. You know, nice. Ah, uh, here we go. So. So that's with the EVAR. Okay, so here's with the fixed lens, this flower with a B on it. And then I think this, if you can see a zoom, that's with, there we go, yeah, yeah. So this is with the, uh, the, the, with the uh, pan scene or reflex lens. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it is, it is a better quality picture. So if you're gonna get one of these Bolexes, you know, Get a, get a, see if you can get one of those Pansino, or, or you could buy a Bolex which has the reflex lens still on it, uh, already on it, as uh, fitted as standard. So let's have a look at some of those. The, uh, what have we got? So that was the B8. Uh, that's the D, D8, D for three, <laughs> three lenses on a, on a turret. And then later on, you got something like this. Now look at the back of the thing. Let's put the main camera back on so, so I can indicate. So there, this whole bit here is pretty much the same back as you had before, but now it's got this. And I think this one is the, uh, P, the P1 made in 1961. There's a P1 and then there's a P4. Let's see the P4. I think that's the P4. That might actually be the K1. But anyway, so, so later ones, um, 1961, 65, yeah, later ones were made um, with, the, with the lens as standard and with a reflex, with a reflex uh, viewfinder. And they, uh, some of them even had motorized zooms. So that's a later one. Some people I, I know, I think uh, my friend um, Manny Salazar's got a P1, the lovely camera. I don't have one, but uh, what, you know, you can't, can't have them all. <laughs> You can try. Some people are total Bolex maniacs. They will, they will try and get every single one of them. Uh, now this, this monster, <laughs> is called an H8. This is also standard eight, and this is pretty much as far technically as the standard eight format ever went. If you don't count the Canon five one two, it's reflex. Uh, I think <laughs> it's got the three lenses. It's much bigger. You can't really tell from this picture, but it's it's huge compared to the the B the B ones, the B uh, B eight, and the and the D eight. This is called an H eight, and it takes hundred foot rolls. So you can take you can shoot hundred feet of standard eight, and then I think you can turn it around and shoot the other hundred feet. Uh, so yeah, you can shoot two hundred two hundred feet of standard eight, and um, oh god. So if 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 twenty five feet gets you four minutes at 16 frames a second. <sighs> 20, oh God, four times uh, 16, no, six, uh, eight, eight, four rolls. That's equivalent of 100 is four rolls. So um, yeah, you can get about 16 minutes per side. So that's about half an hour. You could shoot for half a bleed an hour on an H8. Now Bolex also made something called the H16. Similar, but this is a 16 millimeter camera. So this has also got the three lenses. They made all a whole variety of them. Some of them are called Rex, and some of them are called other things, I can't remember. So this is an H16. So you see the H8 and the H16, they're kind of similar. You can see they're actually about the same size as well. And the, H6, uh, the H8s were made from 1947 to 1965. The H16s were made from 1935 to 1967. Um, which is an amazing run, it's an amazingly long time for a camera. Of course, there are all different types of cameras. Excuse me, I have a drink. 
types of cameras made. Oh. Uh, but um, oh my god, I never put up the uh, I never put up the the B8L sign on the on the top corner. I'm always forgetting that. Ah, now it's on the wrong mode. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, Bolex BAL, even though that's not the BAL. Uh, I wonder how much these cost back in the day. We're always interested in, in the costs of these things. So what I got here is a copy of, let's get it on here, Amateur Cine World. And look, they've got an advert right here for the Bolex. It says, Change to Bolex this year. So uh, I think even I think Doris Day was a spokesperson for Bolex. So um, Wallace Heaton. I know this isn't with the Blue Book prices, but Wallace Heaton was selling these new for look at that, fifty-four pounds, eighteen shillings, and tuppence. tuppence. Why do they put two p on the on the end of that? I do not know. Now pounds, shillings, and pence. I'm sorry, Americans. But uh, we're going we're gonna to talk English money for a second here. This is the old money when uh, we had pounds, shillings, and pence. Luckily, there's a website. Of course, there's a website uh, called Measuring Worth. Very handy. You just enter the year and the amount, and it tells you how much that is in today's money. And I've done it for you. Uh, 54 pounds, 18 shillings, and tuppence in 2020. Get this, 1,292 pounds for that, for that Bolex B8. 1,292, but that's the equivalent to how much these things cost, which is mental. I mean, not mental, but it's just, it's just it, it, it makes you think, doesn't it? I mean, I've got it for 18 quid, and uh, these were, these were high-end high machines. You were supposed to have them for life, basically. Once you got yourself a Bolex, I think that was the uh, that was the idea. Was uh, that that was that was going to last you for life? And to be honest, I think a lot of the people who bought these things are now dead. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it did last them for life. And then there, uh, here's another one here. And then their uh, their heirs went and put it on um, put it on the uh, uh, on the uh, on the eBay. What's this? Payard Bodex 8mm B8 VS variable shutter. That's a lot like mine. £74.15 shillings and zero pence. My God. £74 in 1961. You could have the Beatles playing in your bloody living room every night for a month for £74.15 shillings and zero pence. But of course, then you wouldn't be able to film them because you've spent all your money on the Beatles and, and, and not, on a, uh, not on a Bolex. What would I rather have now? Would I rather have one of these Bolexes or, or have Ringo and Paul come round and... Okay, I'd have Ringo and Paul, but, but you know, I'd film them with my phone, of course. But uh, that's, that just gives you an idea of, how, of, of, of what, what was worth what back in the day, amateur cine world. I've got a few copies of, this, uh, of, these, uh, of these magazines. So maybe I'll, I'll send some out to, the, uh, to my to my lovely viewers. Talking of lovely viewers, let's see what's going on in the chat here. Um, Benjamin Marriott says, gorgeous mechanism. The man with the golden sextant, yes. Oh look, Elizabeth Rattenbender. This is the, this is the one the ancient Egyptians are carrying in the carvings. They look like handbags, but I bet they were age 16. You know what, Elizabeth? I believe that time travel will exist one day and the proof is already all around us i'm talking about like uh the 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 incas they someone did i remember seeing on arthur c Clarke's mysterious world that they dug up what looked like a uh a a, a, a a sculpture of a of a of a delta wing fighter jet uh in the um uh inca ruins which was like five thousand years old but um uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> and, and also there's a picture of a guy in the, in the 40s, and he looks just like me. I'll, I'll find, I'll dig it out. So at some point, I think not only do they, uh, 
invent time machines, but people will be taking their Bolexes back in time and, uh, and, and, and taking pictures. Yes, that's right. Found the time travelers. Bolex accessories. Look at these. The new 8mm zoom lens with reflex viewfinder. How much do they want for that? £90, 16 and 4. Let's see how much £90, 16 and 4 is in 1958. Ah, uh, you can bear with me. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> None of us are. We're all locked in. Oh, no, 1984. 1954. Uh, 90, 16 and 4. So, 90, get ready. Hold on to your hats. This is this is not going to be cheap. Sixteen and four pence. Desired year. Let's try twenty. Well, I'll do twenty twenty because I don't think figures exist yet for twenty twenty. So here we go. Two thousand five hundred and five pounds for one of these. I mean, we're talking like DSLR prices for these things back in the day. Ah. Oh. How exciting. And uh, oh yeah, the H16, uh, the H16 is even more. The H16, that's the uh, the 16 mil, um, was 102 pounds, 15 shillings and five pence, which comes to 2,419 pounds in today's money. So you, when you borrowed the family camera, you know, you didn't, you didn't mess around. Let's see how much they're, <laughs> they're worth now. So this is the Bolex B8. You can pick one up for 16.99. And it comes with a case and a booklet. Uh, Twenty one ninety nine for this one. That's a BAL. Um, oh, look, the handle eighteen ninety nine. Like I said, the handles are exp as, as expensive as the as the cameras. Nineteen ninety nine. Now they're not expensive. You could just buy one of these and play with it for God's sake. You don't even have to put film through it. Though you know, you're talking like another, another the same price again for the for a roll of film and even more. For the um, for the uh, um, for the developing of the film, if you don't do it yourself like me, um, look, this one's got two D mount lenses, twenty nine pounds. Here's another B A L comes with a with a handle with a handle, nineteen ninety. Bloody hell, that's not a B A L. That's not a B A L. There's someone's having a laugh there. Oh, right, B A L. Anyway, so that's how much they uh, they cost nowadays. Oh, that's a Super Eight. So that's uh, yeah, that's your Bolex. That's your uh, that's your Bolex B8, and that's the history of Bolex. In fact, let's have a look here. Um, yes, so the Bolex, the first Bolex is 1928. In 1930, Bolex Payar was formed, and their oh yes, and their um, their slogan. This is great. Was perfection through precision i love that perfection through precision now we're up to 1965 right so 1965 what happens we all know what happened in 1965 super 8 came in that's right standard 8 was no more it went to well it was no it it's it it carried on for a good few years standard 8 but then came super 8 now what did bolex do in the super eight years let's get this uh, on here what does bolex do in the super eight years well they came up with something quite quite wonderful let's have a look bolex uh get that off right super eight so you think okay they 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 really ruled the roost with stands day they were the quality people so, you know perfection through precision and everything so yeah you'd imagine when super 8 came out they came up with something uh, pretty bloody bloody amazing and they did they did they came out with this and i've got one here to show you because my lovely my wife bought me one for christmas yay this was my christmas present this is the bolex 155 super and look at the change in that. That is, I mean, look, here is early 60s, mid to late 60s, 1967, I think, this one. They made a few of them. There was a Bolex 155. This is Bolex 157. It's a mother of a, of a Super 8 camera. It looks like no other Super 8 camera before or since. Because it basically follows the design of, oh, you know what, this... this um, 
starting to get it's going to be a bit, a bit annoying this the uh the bad chroma key here never mind so the zoom the the, the 155 so what what's special about this firstly it's a top loader most super 8 cameras you put the film like somewhere in the body of the camera or in the back of the camera this is a top loader a bit like a magazine a uh, as in a uh, a film magazine you open it up boom here's where you put your cartridge here's where your batteries are go going i'll just show you i'll just show you a cartridge here so there's a cartridge it goes upside down or well not upside down it goes on its end like that like that now you're wondering probably what's the deal with putting it like that because your 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 images are going to come through the lens here and uh, there's your eyepiece at the back so how are they going to get make a, a, a left hand turn and go up into the into the cartridge well this thing has some sort of um, prism in it which redirects the image upwards and onto the uh, onto the into the camera into the film and also you it, it, it splits it so you can see it through this end let's uh, turn over and see what Yay, it works. Oh, oh, forgot the extra lens here. I mean, not the extra lens, I mean the extra microphone. So this is the Payard Bolex 155. It's got a couple of interesting features as well as that, not just this. Here is... <laughs> Penn Reynolds says, Super 8 ray gun. Damn right. Yes. Wow, great gift. Yes, it was a great gift. My, my, my lovely wife, she, she saw me talking to Mali Salazar on, on the show, who had one of these, and I, she could see the, the, the lust in my eyes when I saw this camera. And she did a bit of research, and she actually went on eBay and, and bought this for me, which was absolutely lovely. That's exactly what kind of a present you want, one that you weren't expecting, but the one that you really, really would like. So that's... Uh, all, all props to uh, my lovely wife. So let's focus a bit on there. So what we've got here, firstly, up here, I'll just show you this bit here. That's your daylight filter, your, your sun or, um, so you just switch it there. That's the, uh, the sun filter is on if you're using tungsten film. And that's off, interesting place to put it. Um, I'll shut this now. What else have we got here? This. This is your zoom control, and it's got a little flip-out lever. Look at this. So you flip that out, so you can you can easily zoom. So so Doris Day and and people like that could uh, could uh, could uh, zoom. Focus it. Ah, come on. What's my my focus? What's happened to my uh, my webcam focus here? There we go. So yes, you could zoom. In and out, not a huge zoom. Goes from 8.5 to 30. Here's our uh, our shutter. Push it down to start rolling. And if you're not rolling and you want to lock the shutter, you flip it up, and that's just sort of locks there. Now this little button here, it has automatic iris, which is a bit of a um, actually it's a it's it's a it's a mark against this camera that has automatic iris. I like manual manual uh, iris, but if you want to Stop. If you want to keep your uh, your iris on a certain position, you get the auto to go to that position. Then you hold this down, and it's basically your 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 EE lock that button. So you get it to you know 5.6 or whatever you want to keep it at. Push that in, and then I guess you just sort of <laughs> maybe with your other hand or maybe with your other finger you can start. I don't know. I think you can you can actually sort of push that down and yeah, you can hit the thing as well. There we go. So you push that in. There we go. That's if you want to do anything with your autofocus. Uh, it says B8L up there. That's no. That's no good. Let's change that. Live changing here. This is a one five five. There we go. Uh, now on the other side. Oh God, this is fantastic. Okay, you know how how some cameras have got. Well, not all cameras have got a footage counter, and usually it's a wheel with 0 to 50 written on it. Yep, 0 to 50. This doesn't have a, a, a footage count like that. It's got this, which, I mean, for goodness sake, is that, does that not say made in Switzerland <laughs> more than anything else? 
it's it's I swear that Payard Payard must have got a, a cheap uh, job lot of old watch faces or something. It is so Swiss watch looking. Brilliant. Um, this little flap this is quite nice. If you want to. If you don't want to film, you put that down. It's not really a lens cap, but it's sort of a lens protector. Nice. Uh, I've got a footage counter. This looks a bit like a battery check. You can push this um, this way or that way, and it'll tell you the, bat the, the batteries of the light meter and with the, uh, um, the light meter and the motor. And here is your... Uh, uh, your your viewfinder. And you can switch the viewfinder on and off with this one. This knob, I think, is the focusing of the viewfinder. Can we see anything? Oh, I've got the... No, I've got, oh, I've switched it off, of course. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's not... It's it's not easy to tell. There are some... There are some there's some stuff in there, like a little needle there, which shows you what your f-stop is. Um, now, finally, let's get on to this knob here. What this is, this is your focus knob. Right here, there's your focus. And it focuses from infinity. <laughs> let's get the focus knob in focus for a start. That's good enough. So that's it, that's shot on infinity. And you can turn this, how, how close can you get? How close can you get? you can get up to one inch away from the lens. In fact, this was one of their selling slogans for this camera. It was called, they said, one inch to infinity. And that's what this picture's all about. This picture show, it was, was part of their, uh, their, their advertising bump. And they show a guy here um, walking, <laughs> getting closer and closer to a lady and who's got a flower in her mouth because it was 1967. Um, he's getting closer and closer and closer to her until he's pretty much like got the camera right, in her, right up in her face and he's got it in focus the whole way. Now, even with your Canon 814 XLS and even with your really high-end cameras, if you want to go into macro, there's some shenanigans you have to do. You have to put it, you have to press a knob, you have to get it into macro mode, you have to focus using the zoom, all of that business. Not so the Bolex 155. Somehow, somehow these, these maniacs managed to fit all of that business onto one single focus knob. Let's zoom in on it. Mm. It's probably easier if I just did it that way. There we go. So, yeah, you've got... <laughs> the problem is, is that the focusing is on a kind of a logarithmic scale, okay? What do I mean by that? That mean I mean it's not a, a yeah it's not a, it's not a uh, steady it's not a steady progression from one inch to infinity. So if you turn it all the way over to here, it's one inch, and then from one inch to about um, one meter, from one inch to one meter is all the way around to here. That much, that much turning of the knob between one inch and one meter. And then from one meter to infinity, it's just, it's just that much. So <laughs> under normal filming circumstances, you're not going to be doing a, an awful lot closer than a meter unless you want to get really, really, really close to a woman with a flower in her mouth. Um, and as well as that, if you're going to walk from infinity or let's say a long distance and then walk, go, go closer and closer and closer to something in the same shot, you're gonna have to turn this with absolute precision. After you get closer than a meter, that's a third of a meter, that's uh, one point, that's 20 centimeters, 17 centimeters, and then all the, all the way to uh, whatever one inch is, which is kind of ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> I mean props to Bolex for somehow managing to get macro all the way to infinity on a single knob. But they had to make some serious compromises in the usability of this camera. I think basically, generally, most of the time, you're gonna be just setting this thing at about, I don't know, three, two, three meters and do most of your uh, 
filming there because between three meters and infinity is a, a knob movement of about <laughs> about a millimeter or two just from there to there you know one meter to fifty. i mean you know nice that they did it but um <laughs> they're crazy <laughs> uh. ah Tio Manny is is in the house. Love it, Ben. So cool. They had the Bolex dissolve with that. Yes, some of the some of the I think some of the more um, uh, fancy versions of this because this wasn't the only one they did. This was the one five five. They made another one which could go at twenty four frames a second, and uh, they made another one. I think it had dissolve. So they made a few of these. Now, did they stop at this? No, they didn't. They made more Super Eight cameras, but after these ones, I'll show you. Um, yeah, I had one in my hand myself. I got this. Uh, this was at a, at a uh, part of a massive auction motherload. There's another film I made where I just go through about 28 cameras. This is the Bolex 280. Not made by Bolex. It was made by Umig in Austria. And uh, it's a nice looking thing. I'm sure it was made very well. I'm sure it's very tough, you know. Um, it's a back loader uh, rather than a uh, top loader or a side loader. There you go. You just put your stuff in the back there, put your film in the back. Uh, the only thing is about this camera is that it's got some plastic gears in it, which were easily uh, broken. And once they're broken, this camera was effectively useless. Um, it was that, yeah, that knob, I might have broken it myself, I don't know. But eventually with age, that's your zoom knob. Um, and also, also your auto, uh, you could you could have manual iris, but the manual iris only worked if the auto iris was working. Because when you switched from you know 1.8 to 5.6 or whatever, the auto uh, thing had to do it for you. So if the auto if the auto iris motor break breaks, there's no way of um, manually selecting those. So um, let's have a look at some footage that uh, that I shot. I ought to preface this with the usual. Uh, apology. Uh, okay, I shot this on some Boots Movie Chrome, which I had really, really good results with recently. Unfortunately, this one is the one is turned out green. This was the negative after I developed it. Let's have some music with that. So yeah, it came out green like that. Uh, some Movie Chrome does that. It's the wrong music for this kind of thing, but it doesn't matter. No, no, no. Never mind. Okay, so when I reversed it, you got pretty much a monochrome kind of pink picture. So this was done with the Bolex 155. Um, yeah, like not color. Uh, this was <laughs> after, you see, I didn't have enough light. I didn't shoot it in enough light, so which is why it's all murky like this. Uh, like some nice person said, um, some of my development looks like diarrhea. So uh, yeah. <laughs> as uh, the family having some uh, socially distant uh, dinner in uh, my aunt's back garden. So it does work. It does work the Bose 155. I am not going to put um, that Boots Movie Chrome through it again. I don't think it could handle it. In fact, I've got some uh, some very fresh um, Kodak, one, Kodak 500T, which I will be putting in there. Let's have a look at some... Uh, some footage of oh right what have we got left we've got ah right we've got some footage of from uh from an h8 here um this was shot in the yard around the back of my friend mr x max x's uh workshop he is a motion control cameraman and he motion controlled this h8 and you can see it's very nice looking i mean it's, it's some decent decent effect here decent uh quality the H8. This was with just a D-mount lens, I think. Oh. Again, not the best music. Why not? So he motion controlled it. There's me walking past the camera several times. <laughs> I don't know what, what we're doing. We're just having a laugh. But that's the only H8 footage I've got. Um, has it got his dog in it as well? I think I filmed the dog at one point. There's the dog doing his little trick. Totally the wrong music for that. Uh, so yeah, that's on a Bolex H8. 
damn good camera. I don't have an H8. They're so huge and bulky. I I I think if I'm gonna you know have that bigger camera, I would um I would put um I would get a 16 mil an H16. But they're fun anyway. Ah. My goodness me, it's 8.25. I've been talking my, uh, my, oh, I've been talking my hind leg off. There's one last thing I want to show you. So yeah, Bolex camera is basically bloody brilliant. There's two more things I want to show you. Um, first layer, Bolex are still going. They are still a working company. In fact, I think I think they you can still get get parts and uh, from from Payard or Bolex, which is brilliant. And then someone in 2013 or was it 2011? Uh, 2011, I think they did a Kickstarter campaign to create. Where is it? This, this is a digital. This is the Bolex D16. Not made by Bolex, I don't think, but but made in the in the Bolex um, style. Yeah, the D16, and you can put regular uh, lenses on it, and it's got a bit of that. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> it's got it's got it's got that a bit of that Bolex look to it. There's knobs and that uh, that thing, and they they did a Kickstarter. They made a few. They cost something like three and a half thousand quid, and uh, then they stopped. That was it. They uh, they made a few of them, and um, then that was uh, so. Yeah, you can uh, if you're if you're really really into the Bolex, you can get yourself one of these, and you can put your regular Bolex lenses on. Nice. And not finally, but second to finally, <laughs> they made a they made a documentary. Uh, a documentary. What was it called? The dog's Bolex? I can't remember what it was called. Uh, I'll, we'll, we'll get it in a second because I've got it here. I'm not going to show you the whole. This is a trailer for the footage. I'm just going to show you some of, some of the famous people who've, who've used these Bolexes. I was beginning film school when I had to leave for a family memorial. That's what led to the unearthing of the archives of my great grandfather, Jacques. It turned out he had invented one of the most revolutionary movie cameras of all time. The Bolex. That's called Beyond the Bolex. That's the great granddaughter of uh, Jeff. The cinematographer's a magician. The Bolex is the best box of tricks ever. And just listen to the noise it makes. I got real good at winding up real quick. <laughs> They're nice and light, and you can do a lot of camera moves with them. Spike Jones, Ridley Scott. Once it's in your hands, you can use your body like a tripod. What's the ideal tool to learn the craft of filmmaking? Anyway, that was that was <laughs> that was made by the great granddaughter of um, of uh, Jacques Bogopolsky, which is where the Bolex name comes from. Uh, I haven't seen it. I'd like to see it now. That was made in 2013. Beyond the Bolex, it was called. Great stuff. Um, let's see. We have in the man some some notes, some 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 comments from the uh, from the chat before we uh, before we finish up. Uh, it says, uh, "I just bought a Blackmagic cinema camera, which has the same Super 8, Super 16 sensor as the digital works. Yes, the Blackmagic. That's that's the way we're going now, isn't it?" That's the uh, that's basically a digital back that you can put any of these old lenses on. Great stuff. Um, oh, and Elizabeth Renwell, a nice happy new year to the family. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, Elizabeth Rettenbender. We uh, we would love to. I'd love to have a chat sometime. Sorry, that's a personal friend on the uh, on the chat there. Thanks for tuning in, B. Hope everyone's okay in America. Now. <sighs> enough Bolex, but never mind the Bolex. <laughs> How many more Bolex jokes can I make? I've shown you my lovely pair of Bolexes. Ha ha ha. We have, we have something completely non-Bolex to finish up with. It's been, there we go, yeah, it's working. It's been a little um, uh, habit of mine to show something on Super 8 for the end of the show. And uh, we've got something here. 
which I might get copyright struck on because I think it belongs to Disney, but uh, you won't. Don't don't anyone tell Disney. And I think the uh, the, the fade the, the color has changed so much on this uh, on this uh, on this um, roll of Super Eight that um, it probably won't get picked up by the algorithm. Fingers crossed. Okay, lights off, and here we go. Oh, hope it works this time. We're going to watch a bit of the black hole <laughs> after black magic. Captain, let's go, let's go. Yay, it works. And it's a sound film. And to prove that this is actually happening right now on Super 8. There we go. Look at these great analog effects. A whole storm of them, Captain. The black hole's dragging them in, too. <laughs> this is a great film, apart from the stupid animatronic uh, robots. Not animatronic. Now don't laugh at these effects. These were very, very difficult to do on analog. A lot of people work very hard. Anthropomorphic, that's it, stupid eyes on it. Wow. How the hell did they film that? Must have been miniatures. Blue screen. says this show was the dog's bolex thank you ben well that's i mean you know coming from another ben i think uh, probably uh, gave me the benefit of the doubt the benefit of the doubt oh, jesus <laughs> now they're running through a There's a big robot called Maximilian in this film. It scared the piss out of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Strong ending black hole. From the Bolex to the black hole. And we're not going to watch the entire film. Ah, that was Ben's camera show, ruining the film for you now. The next show, episode two of season two, will be on Thursday, 28th of January at 7 p.m. They're basically next Thursday. I'll be here, nowhere else to go. <laughs> oh dear, it's starting to uh, crap out a little bit. Well, we'll just... I'll talk over the, uh, the, the, who's the guy who did, the, he did all the, we're going back to James Bond, the, the music was done by the same guy who did all those Bond, Bond music. Ah, what was his name? Someone help me out here. What's that guy's name? Famous guy, not Monty Norman, the other guy, uh, who did the James Bond stuff. Ah. Uh. Ah oh, yes, increase power to maximum. That should be my, uh, my 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 tagline for the show. It's over. The storm's over. The storm's over, and so is Ben's camera show. I was worried I wouldn't have enough to talk about today, but as it happens, I've gone way over. I'm gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep playing it until I remember that guy's name, that composer. Oh my God! What did he do? What did he do? Right. Not the Bond theme, but. Oh look! Just, just destruction. Just, just, just mayhem going on. Uh, John Barry, thank you, Ben Reynolds. John Barry, yes. Uh, of course, I won't be able to play the the theme to this because I'll, I'll get I'll get a copyright strike. It's a it's a it's a nice theme. Very Bondy. Ah, and uh, 
I could just hold the film and let it burn through, but I don't want to do that. All right, enough of that. Oh, thanks, everyone. Oh, oh my God, I've got to sit back now. Now, listen. Mm. If you... Um, if you keep commenting on YouTube, I will comment back. It's like I keep saying, I got nothing else to do till Thursday, the 28th of January. What are we going to do next week? I'm not even that sure. It depends on a guest. If we have the certain guest on, we're going to have a whole themed show, which is going to be a right laugh. Uh, if they can't make it next week, the right laugh will have to um, wait for another time, and uh, we'll get another uh, we'll get another another theme going on. Like I said, I've got enough cameras and enough kit to last me a fair while. So that's it, everyone. I'll see you next week, Thursday 28th. This has been fun. I'm going to shoot some more stuff and on, on the Bolex and on all other, other stuff. And that's it. Bye, everyone. If you want to chat later, I'll be, uh, I don't know, I'll be on the YouTube. I ought to have a Discord, really, for all of this. But um, oh, let's, let's make the credits go up. Whoa, bye bye. And I've just heard we've been renewed for a third season. Yay! <laughs> uh, and with that bombshell, oh, goodbye, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next week.